Hello, my name is Martin Blunt and I'm a Professor of Reservoir Engineering at Imperial College London. What I'm going to do in a series of short videos is explain some of the science behind flow in porous media. But this first introductory video is to motivate, is to explain why it is important to study flow in porous media in the first place. And the reason why is that there are major challenges that face our society, technological challenges for this century, that in fact involve the flow of fluids underground, in underground soils and rocks. And to illustrate this, I'll show you a slide here. The picture on the right shows annual CO2 sequestration by carbon capture and storage as a function of date. And this is from a recent paper, paper uh, published just this year, and it's looking at scenarios that will limit dangerous climate change so that the temperature of the earth does not increase by more than about one and a half degrees. What we do, or one of the things that we would do to prevent serious climate change would be to collect carbon dioxide from major point sources such as uh, fossil fuel burning power stations and refineries, and then inject it underground. And where we'll inject it underground is rock, porous rock. So the carbon dioxide at high pressures will be contained in the pore spaces of the rock. But the amount of injection that we need is absolutely enormous. The scale here is in gigatons. If we go to the top of the scale there, 35 gigatons, that's around the total amount of carbon dioxide that we put into the atmosphere at the moment. And what we're looking at in around 2050, under different scenarios, is something almost of that order of magnitude in what we store underground. Now, the major application of flow and porous media today is the opposite. It's not putting things underground, but extracting oil and gas um, from underground reservoirs. And our society, depends absolutely fundamentally on oil and gas. We, our, our technology would collapse within a week without it, even though it does come with very serious environmental consequences. Our current oil and gas industry, or at least our oil industry alone, produces about 100 million barrels of oil every day. Now, I don't want to go through too many units conversions, but in terms of volume on this graph, it's around six gigatons per year. There's also gas, and there's also a lot of water that is handled with the oil and gas industry. So we're looking at volumes here that are around the region 10, 15, maybe as much as 20 gigatons per year. So carbon capture and storage, if we're going to deal with climate change appropriately, is gonna create an industry that in terms of the volume of fluid is about as great as our current oil and gas industry, which at the moment is absolutely vital for our modern civilization. But it's not just oil and gas and climate change, but water. Most of the fresh water on this planet is contained not in surface reservoirs or lakes, but underground in rock. And that's the principal place where fresh water is stored and can be used. And so the wise management of fresh water, as we have a growing population that is using more and more water for agriculture, for industry, and indeed for, uh, for our own drinking, um, is again a problem that deals fundamentally with oil and gas storage. Now, there are other applications, geothermal energy. So again, taking hot fluids from the subsurface, um, unconventional shale oil and gas production, again, are flowing porous media problems. So there is a challenge for this century. And this, this challenge is how do we manage fluids in the subsurface. And the science behind that is flow underground, flow in porous media, in rocks and soils that have holes, essentially have gaps between the grains that compose the rock and soil and that allow flow. So these, these, these holes are, co are continuous, they're connected. Now, traditionally, when people have looked at these problems, because the applications are so important, People would say, well, I'm a petroleum engineer. I look at oil and gas recovery. And as part of that, I just happen to look at flow underground. Or 
I'm a hydrologist, I manage water resources, and oh yeah, 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 I happen to look at flow underground. Or I'm looking at CO2 storage, and of course, well, I suppose I look at flow underground. And so it's been very much the application first, then the science. What I'm going to try and talk about is the science first. I'm going to describe the science of flow in porous media in a series of short videos. And then the applications come later. Okay, well, thank you very much. That is the end of the first video. And the subsequent ones will talk a little bit more in detail about the science itself.